When's the last time you made a great decision or you're on the receiving end of one? What about a bad decision? How many regrets do you have in life that come about as a result of you making a bad decision? Decision making is fundamentally what makes us who we are each and every day. As Jeff Bezos says, we are what we choose to be. But do we really understand the process behind how we make decisions? We use phrases like analysis paralysis, where we look at data, we try and build a big picture of the situation that we're in, and then we make a decision. But the reality is we don't know what is gonna happen next because next hasn't happened yet. The simple case in point is an event like the COVID pandemic, where the 2020 strategies for most organizations was, was thrown into disarray. So let's unpack how we make a decision. Fundamentally, decision-making is based on a feeling. It's how we perceive the world around us, what's happened, where we are today, and what's gonna happen in the future. So 95% of our decisions are based on a perception of the world, not the reality. It's those perceptions that drive thoughts, and a perception might be a gut feel, a feeling of confusion, but it generally starts with the world, I feel something, I feel good, I feel angry. From there, the cogs kick over, our thinking brain kicks in, and the thinking brain is our transition from feelings to action in the context of this conversation. Our thoughts, though, project into the future. We project the likely effect of how I feel now. And again, remember, that's the future. It doesn't even exist yet. And no matter how much work we put in, no matter how hard we try or how much analysis we do, we will never truly understand what is going to happen tomorrow. If you've invested, be it as an organization or at a personal level, you'll be familiar with the product disclosure statement and previous performance doesn't guarantee future performance. It's in every investment paper. It's the ultimate get out of jail free card uh, for your investments performing poorly. As we move from the future, we start to make the decision itself. And that decision is going to result in some action. Now the action is where we get a little bit nervous, the fear of what we do next, which is often why we find ourselves not making the decision. It's not actually analysis paralysis, it's fear of what happens next. The actions that we take, we can see, because that's the real world, deliver results. And those results are generally pretty hard coded inside an organization. It's the whole big data movement and the ability to measure every, everything that happens from the minute someone walks in the building in the morning and leaves in the afternoon or logs onto their computer at home. We pretty much measure everything. But a little bit like a car, if we measured everything that the car did rather than what's important to us, we wouldn't really understand what was going on. If we focused on what speed the wheels were spinning, the exact temperature of the motor, where would we find time to actually move the steering wheel and peg the right speed. These results then deliver an impact. It might be an impact on our team in terms of an emotional impact, but more measurable, it'll be an impact on the market. This decision may have been around a product launch or it may be organizing an event or as we said earlier, an investment decision. But ultimately there's gonna be the effect and the effect will be a loss of money, a loss of profitability, uh, disengagement from our people, there's a myriad, if not thousands, of impacts that your decisions make. And in traditional decision making, that impact is going to shape your perceptions. So if you made a decision one day, and uh, for whatever reason, it was wet outside, and it was rainy, you went out for a coffee and you slipped, your decision about going out in the rain will forever be shaped by that experience. So you'll perceive an element of danger. Up until the point you slipped over, you were perfectly fine. But that's not logical. That, that perception is purely based on one anomalous event. So how do we break that cycle? How do we ensure that actions that deliver impacts that may or may not be recurring, how do we make sure that we make better decisions next time? Well, the key to that is changing our perceptions. And in our traditional thought models, where we don't actually have a step to do that. We just naturally move on. In the positive psychology movement, it'll just be think positive thoughts, change your perceptions by thinking positively. Uh, unfortunately, we can't trick our brains and the brain wants to see some positivity and some positive action and results as well. But we can manufacture 
an environment where we can shape our perceptions to be more positive. Uh, that is a habit and a culture that fighter pilots call debrief culture. And it's the eighth step in our decision-making loop. Because this is where we spend the time to reflect, to reflect purposefully and say to ourselves, hey, what did I perceive? What, what was it that I actually wanted to happen? What was my objective? What was the result? And we have thousands of those, remember? What was the reason why that result happened? What's the cause of this particular outcome? And most importantly, what action am I going to take? Because it's the small actions that we take to modify the impact tomorrow that has the byproduct of changing our perceptions. The way your decisions work is a loop. It's called the decision-making loop. Uh, if you are aware of that loop, you can make changes to it. If you're not, you are doomed uh, to continually make decisions that elicit a fearful response that deliver uh, underconfidence in our abilities. And finally, from a leadership perspective, erode our credibility as a leader. As a leader, your credibility comes from making decisions. It doesn't come from making the right ones all the time.